Welcome to our revision summary on kinetic energy. So first thing we need to know then is that kinetic energy quite simply is movement energy. So anything that moves has kinetic energy. Now what we find is we can actually increase that kinetic energy if the mass increases or if the speed increases. Now that all ties together with our equation that we can see at the bottom there. So our kinetic energy, because it's energy measured in joules, equals half times the mass in kilograms times by the speed squared. So what we've got to make sure we do in this calculation then is to square our speed and then make sure that we've pushed, pushed the equals button on our calculator. It's far too easy these days to make mistakes when using our calculators. So this is why if ever you have one of these calculation questions, then always write the sum you are doing on the answer sheet, okay? So yes, you might be able to work out the answer perfectly, but just in case something goes wrong, always write down the sum that you're gonna type into your calculator, because that would be worth one out of the two marks, even if the calculation goes wrong. To give you an example then of the kind of calculation you might need to do, the question there, find the kinetic energy of a car of mass 1,200 kilograms traveling at 20 meters per second. So the equation we need to use is always printed on page two of our exam booklet. So you flip that and you find kinetic energy equals half times the mass times the speed squared. Now, all we need to do first of all is write down the numbers in our calculation to make sure we get that first mark. So it's gonna be half times by the mass, which is 1,200, times by our speed squared. So our speed is 20 meters per second, so it'll be 20 squared. Now, first thing we need to do is square the speed. So it's always good to do that and then write down your answer in a simplified version of our calculation there. So a half times 1,200 times by our speed, which is 400 after it's been squared. Then you type those numbers into our calculator and the answer we get is 240,000 joules because we are working out the kinetic energy, remember. On the higher tier paper, you might have a slightly more complex calculation to do here. So the question you might get for it is, a tennis ball has a mass of 60 grams. A professional tennis player can serve the ball so that it leaves the racket with a kinetic energy of 75 joules. Calculate the speed of the tennis ball when it leaves the racket. So we get our calculation of kinetic energy equals half times the mass times the speed squared from page two of our exam booklet. Now, it won't give you the rearranged version, okay? So you need to be able to rearrange that equation yourself on this higher tier question. So if we're looking for the speed, then first thing we need to do is because obviously in our kinetic energy equation, speed is squared, we need to take the square root of our actual calculation. So speed equals the square root of the kinetic energy divided by half times the mass. And remember that mass has to be in kilograms. First thing we need to do then is to convert our 60 grams into kilograms. So 60 grams, changing into kilograms, what we need to do is divide it by a thousand. So 60 divided by a thousand gives us 0.06 kilograms. So that's our mass. Then what we need to do is put our numbers into our rearranged equation. So our speed equals the square root of the kinetic energy, which is 75 joules, divided by half times the mass, 0.06 kilograms. So if we simplify that down a little bit by starting with our brackets there, half times 0.06 gives us 0.03. So we need to do the square root of 75 divided by 0.03 which gives us our final answer there of 50 meters per second.